When the Body Says No by Gabor Mate. I never get angry, a Woody Allen character says in one of his movies. I grew a tumor instead. Hi and welcome to the Book Lab, I'm Bjorn and this is the place where we bring you the best book recommendations every week. So make sure to subscribe uh, on the topics of philosophy, psychology, human nature and human potential. And today we are talking about When the Body Says No by Gabor Mate. In When the Body Says No, Gabor Mate explores the mind-body connection when it comes to chronic disease. More specifically, he looks at the link between stresses and repressed emotions and the development of uh, diseases such as ALS, Alzheimer's, cancers of different kind, irritable bowel syndrome and other sicknesses. In this book review I will summarize my favorite takeaways from this book and I will also share some personal stories that relates to the topics that this book covers and if you wait to the end I will also give you an book lab update on my uh, newly started Patreon page. If you stay to the end you will get that information as well. Quote, people suffer when their boundaries are blurred. Disease is a boundary question. If we look at the research that predicts who will get ill then we will immediately notice that the people who have suffered the most severe violations of their boundaries during the period where they not fully developed a full autonomous self those are the ones that will be most likely to end up with chronic disease. Quote, most of the tensions and frustrations stems from compulsive needs to act the role of someone we are not. Many people with chronic illnesses realize often too late unfortunately that having a self-image of being self-reliant, being strong, being invulnerable often leads to stresses and a disturbance of the inner harmony. Three factors that universally lead to stress. Uncertainty, lack of information and lack of control. People with ALS have two lifelong patterns that distinguish them from other people. The first one is that they have a trait called rigidly competent behavior. This is the inability to ask for or receive help. The second one is chronic exclusion of negative feelings. Honor the urge. To do so is healing for ourselves, and not to do so deadens our body and our spirit. Quote, when I did not write I suffocated in silence. What is in us must out. I've always had a big urge to create but during my late 20s early 30s I put that creativity in a corner somewhere for a couple of years. That period marks the dark ages of my life and it's a period where I developed a lot of destructive thinking, I took on some really bad habits and I had a general feeling of discontent. During that period I wasn't consciously aware of what was missing in my life but in hindsight I realized it was out, being outside making movies with my friends, we did a lot of horror movies, skateboarding and expressing myself in that way and running projects such as building websites. Uh, all of that had been replaced by a deadening job and shores. The emptiness inside that I felt during that period was held at bay by distractions, right? I was playing a lot of video games, I drank a lot of alcohol, I ate a lot of cheese doodles. But when I started creating again, that feeling disappeared. And Book Lab was one of the big remedies for that situation. My favorite takeaway from this book was about guilt and resentment. Quote, if you face the choice of feeling guilt and feeling resentment, choose guilt every time. Resentment is soul suicide. This is wisdom that Gabor Mate heard from his own therapist and has passed on to many others since. Sometimes me and my wife we have different views on things, right? We have different priorities, different ideas on what should be a priority and what shouldn't be. And sometimes when I go along with her wishes too much, I feel a slight bit of resentment creeping up. Interference with one's personal decisions, even well-meant ones, could be a source of resentment. Choosing guilt in such cases might be a good thing. It means that you did something for yourself. People without guilt, they put themselves last. And that might be fine to do from time to time, but it shouldn't be a person's modus operandi. When the Body Says No is an eye-opening book. I maybe wouldn't recommend it to someone who's right in the middle of a very very stressful situation uh, because it might cause you even more emotional distress. But I bet if you read this book through at least one of the case studies will resonate with you and your life situation and it might be 
the wake up call that you need. I had a period in my life when I was under extreme stress. I was trying to start up my own company uh, alongside working a full time job and having two kids that were sick all the time during that period as well. The stress that I felt during that period was crazy. And when you're in that, when you're inside the stress, so to speak, it's really hard to take a step back and look at your situation. It was not until my body started to protest that I snapped out of it. During this period, I uh, got heartburn, I got, I got shingles. I also, it was, this was also a period where I started to lose my eyesight and, and now I need to wear glasses. A coincidence? Maybe. Or maybe it was a way for my body to say no. It was not until long time afterwards that I could clearly look at the situation and how insane it was. And I think reading this book could prevent you from ending up in that uh, situation altogether. So you don't have to grow a tumor before you realize that your lifestyle needs to change. The only caveat that I have with this book is that I feel like it has a little bit of a man with a hammer syndrome. Okay, so what I always call man with a hammer syndrome. To the man with a hammer, every problem tends to look pretty much like a nail. His syndrome doesn't exempt bright people. You might leave this book thinking that all chronic issues are due to uh, repressed anger and personal needs because that's how it makes it sound. And I'm always skeptical when someone tries to explain a wide range of complex issues with one simple thesis. But what I do appreciate with Gabor Mata's books is that he has a willingness to go to the root cause of an issue where most authors would stay at the surface level and look at the problem and the symptoms. Gabor Mata goes deeper. And a great example of this is in Hold On To Your Kids, another book by the same author. In this book, he deals with the underlying issue of attachment among kids. And through that lens, he explains the reasons for kids' behavior and he does this rather than providing just techniques for handling the symptoms. There is a qualitative difference between the approach of, hey, if you have kids that are a handful, here are four parenting tips that will help the getting them in line. And here's why kids are a handful today and how you can help building an environment to support healthy psychological development. There's a big qualitative difference in these two approaches to tackling an issue. And Gabriel Mate provides the latter. When the body says no, does just that, and it does so in a brilliant way. It has a balanced mix of uh, case studies and relevant research data, and it does it. It's written in a way that it makes even this very complex uh, topic accessible to a popular audience. It is one of the last books that I read in 2022, and it's ended up in the top. It was one of the best books that I read last year. If you like the sound of this book, then I have the perfect video for you to watch right after this, uh, along with some upcoming reviews that I'm going to present. But before that, make sure to subscribe, like and share. It really helps me reach more people. Maybe you already found this channel valuable and you want to support it. Then I have news for you because you can be my first Patreon. I'm launching my Patreon page today. It's a way for people that they can support book lab and help the development of the channel. So uh, going to my Patreon page, it's in the description below. There you'll find all the goals and my plans for the future. Uh, but let's get into the books. I actually have quite a few Gabor Mate books uh, that I want to talk about. A book that I really want to recommend that I finished uh, a few years ago and I have a review up for that and you should definitely check that out. Uh, this is book is about addiction. Close Encounters with Addiction. Gabor Mate is one of the world's most revered thinkers on the psychology of addiction. His radical findings are reframing how we view human development. Th this book is an outstanding book that anyone who struggles with addiction or have people in their uh, close proximity that does should definitely read this one. I mentioned Hold On To Your Kids. I will have a review up of that very soon. It's actually a book about attachment. Uh, I have a review up on the book Attached, but that's more for dating, right? This talks about your attachment with your kids and why parents matter more than ever. I also have uh, Scattered Minds, The Origins of and Healing of Attention Deficit Disorder. I haven't started this one yet, but expect the review come up as soon as I've read it. On another note, I've started, never finished by 
David Goggins, a follow-up book to Can't Hurt Me, a book that I really enjoyed. So hopefully this will get me back into the gym and get me back into shape. We will see. Maybe you'll see some results already next week when I'm back with more book reviews. Until then, Bjorn out. Cheers. <laughs>